Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Snapmaker Array Laser Engraver with the 40 watt laser module. This machine offers a few different options. You can select the machine with just the 40 watt module or have a fully enclosed machine with a 20 watt or 40 watt module. As of today, the price of this machine ranges from $1,000 to $1,450 depending on the configuration. Let's take a look at the features and specs of this machine. The working area is 600 by 400 millimeters, and the frame and motion system are in line with other Snapmaker machines. It uses modular linear rails for both the X and dual Y axes. Since these modules are heavy, the machine itself without the enclosure weighs over 33 pounds. The Z axis has a built-in gauge for setting the focal length and adding compensation for materials of different heights. It uses a lever to lock the laser module in place instead of thumb screws like most other laser engravers. The laser module for my testing machine is a 40 watt one. When cutting, you can use it at full power, and when engraving, you can set it to half power to get a smaller laser dot for better detail. The claim top speed of this machine is 500 millimeters per second or 30,000 millimeters per minute. The cutting bed is a grill style one instead of the traditional honeycomb bed. For the enclosure, it uses 30 by 30 and some custom aluminum extrusions, and it requires a table space of about 37 inches by 27 inches by 16 inches. The enclosure includes LEDs, an exhaust fan, ducting, and a door sensor that can stop the machine when the door is open. There are legs to raise the machine as well as the cutting bed. When working with taller objects, you can remove the legs from the cutting panel and use them to raise the height of the machine. It comes with an external electronic enclosure and an air assist pump that is powered by the machine. This lets you use the software to turn off the air assist for engraving and turn it on for cutting. It has its own Luban software, which supports Wi-Fi. And if you're used to Lightburn, it also has a Lightburn profile that is fully compatible with the machine, except for the Wi-Fi feature. I would like to thank Snapmaker for sending us this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. And with that, let's get started. As the machine I received comes with the 40 watt module and enclosure, there are two boxes. I will start with the machine. Everything is well protected and the custom laser cut foam organizes the parts pretty well. We have the dual Y and X axis modular linear rails, the cutting panel, air assist pump, laser goggles, some riser legs, the electronic enclosure, mounts, brackets, the 40 watt laser module, and some cables and tools. I will start with putting four legs on the Y-axis modules. Then I will connect the X-axis module with them and form the machine. Use some cable clips that came with the machine for some simple cable management. Mount the laser module plate on the X-axis, install the laser module, and connect the cable and air tube. If you have the enclosure, you may want to connect the cable later. If not, you can just plug all cables and the air pump to the electronic box. As I also have the enclosure, I will put it together as well. The enclosure is formed by some 30 by 30 aluminum extrusions and a few custom extrusions. There are some connectors, an exhaust fan, ducting, some tools, and a few acrylic panels. Putting this enclosure together is pretty straightforward. Just form the side frames with the 30 by 30 extrusions, use two custom extrusions for the base, slide in the acrylic panels, and connect some cables for the LEDs, exhaust fan, and door sensor. Then, we have to put the machine inside before we put on the front panel, and finally the top cover. Now the machine is ready to use. I will install the Luban software from Snapmaker and update to the latest firmware. As you can see, I'm now using the USB cable. If you want to use Wi-Fi, just go to the network settings to enter the SSID and password of your network. Then, an IP address is shown here, so we can now disconnect the USB and connect to the machine using Wi-Fi. Let's home the machine. It seems the motion system is working. I will try the LEDs and the exhaust fan, and it seems everything is working fine. If you prefer Lightburn, it also comes with a profile for that. Just go to Devices, and to import it, you don't need to change anything. Just select the correct COM port and the machine, and you can just use Lightburn to control it. 
I will start with a simple material test by using different speeds from 13,000 to 20,000 millimeters per minute and engraving from 10% to 100% power. We can see some difference between 13,000 and 20,000, but as the small square is just 10 by 20 millimeters, the difference is not huge. Then I will run a cutting test on 5 millimeter plywood at speeds from 600 to 1200 millimeters per minute. It can cut through completely at 800 millimeters per minute or slower and at any power greater than 60%. The fastest speed it can cut through is 1,100 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Next, I will try some thicker wood. I will cut this half inch or 12.7 millimeter poplar solid wood, starting with 100 millimeters per minute. Then 150. I will also try 175, 200, and 225 millimeters per minute. But most 40 watt modules may not be able to cut through this thickness at 200 millimeters per minute. But let's see. As you can see, it cut through completely at 100, 150, and 175 millimeters per minute but it didn't succeed with 200 and 225. So it seems the result is in line with other 40 watt modules. This machine claims to be able to cut 15 millimeter solid wood in a single pass, but I don't have the exact thickness. I would try speeds from 100 to 200 millimeters per minute. For 100 and 125, it just drops right off. For the 150, I need to snap it to separate the parts that are still connected at the bottom. For 175 and 200, they both didn't cut through. So I would say the fastest speed it can cut through this 19mm board in a single pass is 125mm per minute. Then, I will try to engrave a photo. Since most 40 watt laser modules can't get good results when engraving photos, this laser module has the option to select full diode or half diode. I will use the half diode mode to make it work like a 20 watt module. I think the result is pretty good. You can see the 3D printers in the background, and compared to other 40 watt modules, we can get more details in the pictures. Next, I would try to cut some black acrylic. The parameter table suggests using 240 millimeters per minute to cut three millimeters of black acrylic, but my first try didn't succeed as I forgot to set the laser back to full power after the photo engraving. Then I tried again with the full power. This time it cut through completely. However, using a diode laser to cut plastic may not deliver as good results as using a CO2 laser, as the diode laser burns too hot and melts the plastic. As you can see, the edges are not very clean. Up next, I will engrave on a coated aluminum business card. As this card is thin and light, it would be better to stick it on a piece of wood. I would try to align the logo using the cross alignment laser.
the result is okay. It's better than using a single laser dot to align. The layer of coating was burned off, and you can see the original color of the aluminum card. Then, I will try to engrave on a round slate. Without a camera, it will be challenging to align it at the perfect center, so I will just make the pattern slightly bigger to make sure it covers from edge to edge. As expected, the result is pretty good, and the patterns look fine and cover the slate from edge to edge. We recently bought another old film camera, but it didn't come with a cap. It's totally fine to just print one, but I want to engrave a logo on a piece of leather and put it on the 3D printed cover. As the leather is curled, it would be easier to stick it on a piece of wood, just like the thin aluminum card. I made a minor mistake by starting the cut before engraving, but as the leather is still on the wood, it should have no impact. Okay, it cuts through completely, and the engraving looks just fine. I think it looks nicer than just using a 3D printed lens cover on this vintage camera. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The modular linear rails are well made, and the whole frame is heavy and rigid, which increases stability when doing high-speed engraving. I can easily boost the engraving speed to 25,000 millimeters per minute. 2. The air assist pump is connected to the electronic enclosure, letting you turn it on for cutting and off for engraving using the software. Three. The 40 watt laser module is powerful. You can also select half power mode, which only uses four of the eight diode lasers inside the module. This not only decreases the power, but also makes a smaller laser dot for higher detail engraving. Four, using the lever to secure the laser head is better than using thumb screws. It's not only faster, but it also makes the laser head more square to the cutting bed, as most thumb screws tend to tilt the head slightly to one side. Five, the cross-alignment system works better than using just one laser dot. It lets you see the frame more clearly and makes it easier to align your workpiece parallel to the laser head. It also helps with aligning smaller objects. 6. The enclosure is well made, with 30x30 30 30 and custom extrusions making it sturdy. The exhaust fan is very powerful, and with two sets of LEDs, it allows you to see your workplace without any extra lights in your room. I filmed all the video clips using the built-in LEDs. Now for the cons. 1. The enclosure can only be opened from the top without any spring pistons. When opening from the top, it is also not easy to fit larger materials. It would be easier if you could slide them in from the front and also have the option to use materials longer than the machine by keeping the door slightly open. 2. The cable management is not the best, even though it has many cable clips and a large cable loom to pack them together. I would prefer to see the cables integrated into the linear modules and have short cables between them to connect everything together, as that would require just one ribbon cable to the enclosure. 3. The enclosure is large and tall, so it would be ideal to have a camera fixed on top. With Lightburn or the Luban software, the camera would make this machine even more beginner friendly and also suitable for batch production. 4. It has no touchscreen or offline controller, so you would need a computer to control the machine most of the time. Adding a $20 touchscreen to work as an offline controller would allow users to store frequently used files on the machine and operate without a computer. In conclusion, the build quality of the Snapmaker Ray is significantly above average, especially if you select the 40 watt module with an enclosure. This provides you with a complete laser engraving package, including the laser engraver, 40 watt module, cutting panel, air assist pump, and enclosure with exhaust fan and ducting. Its price is slightly higher than the average laser engraver, but the build quality is not just a little better, it's much better. Everything about this machine is well polished, and most of the designs are practical and user friendly. The Luban software is also very user friendly. If you're new to laser engraving and don't have a Lightburn license, you probably won't need one and can easily start with the Luban software. 
If you're upgrading from an older open frame laser engraver, you'll be impressed by the build quality and design of this machine. So, I will award this machine the title of the best build quality laser engraver for 20 watt or 40 watt, and include it on my recommendation list at auroratechchannel.com, which also monitors the prices of over 150 popular 3D printers. I put the link in the description. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.